Hey guys, so we're here with another logic order pair. This week we had a, a customer send us a 17 inch early 2009 MacBook Pro. And this particular machine is having the issue where it will not power on at all. I'll just show you that so you can see. I'll plug it in. We have it plugged in now. Press the power button and nothing happens. It's pretty much no response. It acts like it's not getting any power at all to the board. Unfortunately, I know exactly what's wrong with this thing. I've gotten so many of these in, and it's the, we're not getting as many of them in uh, as in. We're not getting as many of them in anymore, just because they are approaching 10 years old. Uh, but we do have customers that still use them, and so we get them every now and then. It's typically a fairly easy fix if uh, you have the right equipment and the replacement parts. Um, it's very similar to the 2010 uh, MacBook Pro GPU issue that I did a video on where it's the capacitor, the power capacitor. And I'll show you on the schematic here. So right here you have the MCP 1.05 volt auxiliary, auxiliary C supply. And this tantalum capacitor over here, this poly tantalum capacitor C7771 is the same issue that we have with the 2010 MacBook Pro GPU. This tantalum capacitor is just really not made for this type of work. And so that capacitor typically goes bad and when that happens the MCP is not getting a sufficient power and the machine won't power on. And I'll show you on the uh, board view. Here I have the board view. And we'll do a search of that C7771 and this is the location of it right there. Here's the MCP chip and here you have that capacitor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and remove this board from the computer and we'll take a look at it and I'll show you that capacitor and how the size of it, it really is not made to be doing the job. So give me a few moments, I'll take this board out and I'll show you under the microscope what we're talking about. Here we are, we have the board and I'll show you the board view again. Um, zoom out. So here's the board. You can see it matches up with the layout. You have the MCP chip right here. And over here, right there, is our um, little tantalum capacitor that we're going to be replacing. I'll show you under the microscope. Here we are under the microscope, and you can see that small tantalum, tantalum capacitor. It looks the exact same as the um, 2010 MacBook Pro that we did for the GPU. And here is the capacitor we're going to replace it with. So again, you can see it is a little bit bigger than the capacitor that's on there. And fortunately, with this one, we're going to have... Unfortunately, we're not going to have a whole lot of space to extend those pads to put this new capacitor down. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, first of all, we're going to remove that capacitor. So we're going to take that off with a hot air gun. that off. What's nice about these older boards, you can see the, where it's marked the number C7771, just like we saw in the schematics. Uh, Apple used to do this with their boards and I wish they still did. Uh, it's very hand, uh, helpful when uh, doing these repairs if you don't have the uh, board view especially. But anyways, uh, now here's our pads. Uh, as you can see the MCP chip is over here. So instead of pointing the hot air um, in that direction, we're pointing it in this direction, away from the MCP, so we don't damage that BGA chip, uh, which would cause a whole other mounds of issues that we uh, don't want to have to deal with. So I'm going to put some new solder on those pads, and I'll show you again the replacement one that we're going to be putting on there. Let's zoom in here so you can see. Alright, so here's the replacement one, and you see how we, we can just barely get those pads on there. 
So we have we had, we we are going to be able to get them on there without extending these pads, but um, we're just going to make sure that we split the difference with this and put it right in the center like that, and we should be good to go. Uh, like you remember, right now the board is not powering up at all, and so we're going to put this new capacitor on there and get power to the board or power to the MCP so that we can power the board up. Put some new leaded solder on these pads. Apply some flux. A little bit too much solder on those pads, so we're just going to take a little bit off. All right, that should be good. Let's see if we're in focus for you guys. All right, and now we're going to put the new capacitor on, and the positive side's on the left side. Some more flux. I hope that solder to flow into place. All right. So now what we're going to do is give it a little try and see if we have power to this board. So I'm going to put it back in the, the top case of the machine and see if we get power, see if we get some fan spin. So I'll put it back in and we'll be back in just a minute. Alright guys, so here we go. Oh, I got it back in. Got the uh, fans, but everything plugged back in, the RAM back in. Uh, we'll see what we get. So let's open it up and power it on. And we get a fan spin now. And do we get a display? Yes, we do. We have a display and... Huh? We got an Apple logo. So, this board's booting up and working like it should. So, we're good to go on that. Um, we're going to put it through some more tests, make sure I clean the flux off the board where I repaired it, and uh, make sure everything's working good. But typically with these machines, what we used to do is reflow the MCP chip thinking that was a problem, and it would fix it for a little bit. What it would do, though, was he it would heat up that uh, tantalum capacitor. And when you apply heat to those capacitors, they tend to work. They start working for a little bit. However, after a while, they start messing up again, and the customer just sends us the board back. So we were like, what? how can this be? Uh, you know, what, What's going on with this? Well, other technicians were starting to find out. Uh, and we found out that tantalum capacitor is the problem. Uh, so we replaced it. Everything's good. And so now we, from now on, we, we've only replaced those capacitors with the correct capacitor that goes on there. And we've had no issues. Uh, it seemed to be getting a lot of these fixed. Uh, we used to get these in a lot, not so much anymore. But if you do have this, this machine and you are having the problem with it getting no power or it shutting down on you, that's uh, most likely the problem, and we do these repairs. So um, now you know how to do it, uh, if you want to do it, or you're welcome to send it to us, and we can we can do the repair for you. Uh, if you have any questions, make sure and contact us, and uh, hopefully we can get you squared away. Hope you learned something, and hope you have a great day.